Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, God is God is so good. I, I thank Him for everything He does for me. And sometimes people take for granted what they do have uh-huh. in God. Come on. I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about in God. Amen. Amen. Come on. We it's take true. for granted what things we do have in Him. That's right. And you know, it seems like in this hour that some people fall asleep so easy, Brother J.R. When Amen. Jesus went into the garden to pray, He left uh, Peter and the disciples there to think like, Peter and John and James, and they fell asleep while He was just praying. I don't know how long He prayed, but just maybe just a little while, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, and He come back and they were asleep. And eventually, after a couple times of Him praying, He come back and He told them to sleep on. Sleep on. Come on. And you know, in this hour, sometimes I believe God's going to look at some people and say, sleep on. He's going to get tired of waking you up Come out of your pits and other things that yeah. you're in. It's time to start waking up in this hour and, and, and get where we need to be because there's yeah. so much. A lot of people say, well, you can't go no higher. But you can keep on getting higher in God. On. There's never enough. You can keep right. on getting more out of the Word of God. Come on. Every time I go up on the mountain, I keep receiving more. I got the Holy Ghost and I got God on my side. But you know what? There's still more for me to get. There's still more in God than just getting up every morning and reading this book. There's still Amen. more. And every single day, there's more in God. I think... God for everything He shows me, but there's still more. He can show me a great revelation in the Word, but there's still more. He can get really. He can just like Joe refill me in the Holy Ghost again, but there's still more. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's so it's good. not a time to fall asleep. That was just something I just I just said it just opened my mouth and let God uh, feel it. We thank God for everybody that's come out this way to hear us tonight and let God minister to your hearts. If you have your Bibles, turn to Revelation chapter thirteen. I, I don't want nobody to get upset at the word, but some people need sometimes to just mark up to it and let God have His way. If you don't agree with it, take it home and study it. Amen. And then whenever you study it, you either see it, well, you'll see it if you study it out with the Spirit anyhow. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 11. When you have a say, Amen. 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 Revelation 13 and verse 11 says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. For he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and, co- and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might be- buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. I preached a message, probably it's probably been close to about eight months now, I'd say, since I preached that message I preached here. I don't know if anybody remembers about concerning the time. I preached that and at the same time God was doing that message, He gave me this one at the same time. And I said, whenever He wants me to bring it out, no matter what I, whatever, wherever I go, whatever I do, I, I want God to have His way. And some people don't agree with this. Some people see it other ways. But to me, I read and I've studied and I've studied and I've studied. Something was brought, brought to my attention on this one time. And I never really studied on it before. But I got to digging in the Word. This was probably around May of 2016. I got to studying on this Word. And I've studied on it, dealt with it, prayed about it, studied, 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 stayed in Revelations a lot, and really seen what God wanted me to to preach. I've really felt this for a while now, Brother J.R., to preach this, and I want people to see this because it's something when it comes upon us, 
It's going to be too late to, to try to believe it then. You may be not strong enough in the spirit to receive this and to understand what God has, has for us. But you know what? I'll, I'll look at somebody and say the beast generation. The beast, the beast generation. generation. I believe that we're living in the beast generation. I don't think that... And, and Jesus is so close. We talked about this last night. Is so close to coming back. And I believe that He is. I, I read in the Word. I see the signs of the times coming to pass, Brother J.R. And I, I just, I really feel like God's so close to come back that people are laying back and not serious with God and not serious about the Bible not serious about the ways of God. And I tell you what, this generation that we're going to be in, I'm telling you, I'm talking about me. I even could be Brother J.R. and my dad and, and Joey and all. It could be every one of us in this generation. I truly believe that we're going to see what the Bible talks about here when it said that they cannot buy or sell except him that had the mark. I believe I'm going to see that in my lifetime. If I, like, yeah. As long as I keep on living, but I, I truly believe I'm going to see that. I think that we'll see it in this time, and I will probably could yeah. be in the next 10 or 20 years. I don't know how long, but I know that it's coming, and yeah. it's very soon. It's at the door. I was reading in Matthew 24, and I thought about this today, how he said that it was at the door. And I thought, my God, it's so close in this hour. It said, in the yes. days as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Yes. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And I begin to think about that. And I begin to think all the things that were going on in them days is going on right amongst us today. And I know some people are preaching an easy way out of here. And we're missing out on this tribulation. And we're missing out on persecution. But I tell you what, he said you'll be hated of all men for my name's sake. And I read in Matthew 25 and 24 and 25, it said then immediately they went into great tribulation. You can't throw away Matthew 24. And 25. Oh, some people will say, I'll throw it away and then preach on it the next week. Let me tell you something. The Matthew 24 and 25, and it applies to us. Oh. I can tell you what, it said immediately they went into great tribulation oh. as not had been before. And we're going to go through some things like this world has never seen before. I'll tell you what, he wasn't talking about everybody in the world. He was talking about the church. He was talking about the Gentiles and the Jews. He was talking about the church yes. of the living God was going to have to go through some things and Come I can on. tell you what we are going to be a part of this beast generation Come on, come on. Yeah. I, we don't want to receive it we don't want to have it this way we want to have it the easy way out yeah. and we want to have it the way that this brother says it and that brother says it but I can tell you if you read the word of God oh, but some will take this scripture and apply it to it but we'll have the other one but let me tell you there was a spot in Revelation where the Lord John was there and he's seen the angels and, and the people around the throne a great number that no man can number and he said they were singing blessed power on all these different things to him. And he said, well, who are these? What are these? And he said, thou knowest, sir, who these are. And he said, and the, and the elder said to him, said, these are they which came out of the great tribulation. And then it said that they have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And I tell you what, if you ain't got your robe washed in the blood of the Lamb, ah, come on somebody, you've got to get this thing right in this hour. Ah, I've got my robe washed. Ah, he gave me a garment one day for the J.R. And I began to wash it. I'm telling you I washed it in the blood of the Lamb. Ah, when we come out of this tribulation, I'm coming out and I'm going to the throne and I'm going to have on a robe that has his name on it. I'm going to have something in my forehead that has his name on it. I don't want the name of it. It said that they had the, the received the mark in their foreheads or in their hands or had the name of the beast. I don't want the name of the beast on me. I'm going to be part of this beast generation. It's rising up right now as we speak. And I tell you what, I, you better have the name of Jesus. You better be filled with the precious Holy Ghost in this hour. I'll tell you what, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you won't stand. Come on, man. Come on. That's true. There was something that stood out to me. How about the ten virgins? It said that five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. The five that were wise, they had their lamps and they had oil in their vessels. Then there was the foolish that had their lamps but didn't take no oil with them. There's going to come a time Oh, you got a lamp. You got a little bit to keep you. What you've gathered up at church. But there's going to come a time when you won't be able to gather like we're here all night. Oh, I tell you what, there's going to come a time when we're going to be laying out. They're going to shut the doors in this building. And we're going to be out in the woods somewhere or another trying to serve God. And you better have the genuine Holy Ghost to stand. Oh, I tell you what.
word, you can have just a good feeling, but it's not going to keep you in the end times. You can have a good song, but it's not going to keep you in the yeah. end times. You got to be baptized with the Holy Ghost yeah. and fire. Oh. I come when this beast generation rises up and the beast rises up in the earth, and we're going to be a part of this, and we're going to see these things come to pass. And I'll tell you what, I come to tell somebody tonight when the beast offers you something, don't receive it. It kind of reminds me of that strange woman that come there and like, oh, it's yes. going to look good. Yeah. And it's not going to look like what the Bible really says. Come it's on. not going to look like that. You're not going to think that's what it is. Come on. Uh-huh. Come on. He's going to be so sly when the beast rises up. It's not going to look like, well, that's not what the word says. Uh-huh. He's going to be sly about it. Amen. Because it's not about the world. That's not really who they're after. It's not Trump and all these different big names that he's after. He's after the saints of God. It's not about those ones that's doing their own thing. He's looking to deceive many. Uh, The Bible says, whenever the son comes in my name saying, Lo, here is Christ, and here's another. And there's something going to rise up acting like it's of God. And I'll tell you what, but it's not going to be of God. Uh, If it's of God, it'll come to an eye. If it's not of God, it'll come to an eye. But if it's of God, you won't fight against it. It's a happen that you be bound to fight against God. When it rises up, I can tell you if you got the Holy Ghost, it'll tell you whether or not it's right. But it's going to rise up. And you're not, it's not gonna, you're not gonna think it's like the word is. Well, that's yeah. not what it's talking about here. But I can tell you when it rises up and it begins to happen, it's gonna happen so quick, Brother JR, that people's gonna run to it and yeah. they're gonna flog to it. Yeah. Oh, just like they flogged to Jesus when he came yeah. through. It's gonna be so simple and so easy. Oh, I don't know where this is coming from, but people's gonna run to this doctrine that comes out and they're gonna run to it, but I don't know it's the Holy Ghost, but I tell you what, they're gonna run to it. And it's not all you think. Oh, I'm not taking that more. That's what people said for you. Uh-huh. But when the beast rises up and it's got that power, all oh, some people won't preach it that way. It ain't got no power. Pa- oh, it said that it gave you power and it's going to do signs oh. and wonders right among them and miracles yeah. right among them. And you're going to fall for this trick that the yeah. devil's got for you. I oh, come to tell somebody now, don't fall into the beast. Yeah. Don't fall into its powers. Don't fall into what it's got. It ain't got the name of Jesus. All oh, power oh. is in the name of Jesus. Oh, I've got his name written on my forehead. Oh, I've got his name instilled in me, Brother Jay. Yeah. And it's going to be important that we are filled with His Holy Ghost. Yeah. And His name is on our foreheads. Yeah. Oh, somebody needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 Brother Hunter, I'll wait. And I'll, Come on. I'll wait to that day to get mine. <clears throat> What's going to come that day? But the problem is, when that day comes and there's no power to resist, what is put in front of you, the power that's put in front of you, that day comes and you can't resist it uh-huh. and you can't come against it come on. and you can't flick it off. You can't shake off what it's bringing you. And there's going to come a time, but there's going to be a few over here that's peculiar, Brother JR. Uh-huh. That's not yeah. like the rest of them. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be so many that great falling away that day. That's going to be when all the people that said they were that they had the Holy Ghost, that said they was born again of the water uh-huh. and of the Spirit. There's going to come a day. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. Can yeah. we get an amen in here? Oh, they're going to have that. some kind of Holy Ghost to keep them. And if they ain't got the real genuine Holy Ghost come oh, that day, Ah, they'll fall right into the yeah. power of the beast. They'll fall right into Oh, come on. What about that strange woman that Proverbs talked about? It said that she was lying in the street corners. Ah, oh, she went right out in the open with the street lights. She was right around the corner. So she could kiss. It said that she caught him and kissed him and gave him something. There was something when it went across his face that he felt that he liked. Oh, come on. Yeah. Out of God, I got you best something. Oh, the secret of Ahia. He felt something and it shook him. And he said, I like what I feel. Oh, come on, you're going to like what you feel. Come on, son. You're going to like what you feel that day. But it's not the Holy Ghost. It's not the power of God. It's called the beast rising up. It's called something that's going to deceive you. Oh, you have time to tell somebody tonight. You better not get deceived by what the beast has got. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. Preach it. It's good. Somebody needs this. Thank you, Lord. You better get real with God while there's still a chance. Let me tell you something. Staying at the house, not praying, and not seeking God is what's going to come that day. And you ain't been prayed up. And you ain't been read up. And you you don't even know what's coming upon you. And it's said in the Bible that the men's hearts are failing for fear. What's coming upon them? Why was it 
It's because they didn't listen to the preachers. It's because they didn't listen to the word of God. It's because they brushed it off and they shook it off their feet when the man of God come by. Oh, let me tell you something about a man of God. He's got authority and he's got power over top of what you say. Let me tell you something about God's people. He'll give you a word. He told Jonah what Nineveh was doing and sent him a word of repentance. And let me tell you something. You better turn around on your seat and give it back to God. It's an hour that we need to give ourselves back to God. Stop leaving yourself where you're at. Turn yourself back to God. A beast generation that's going to rise up. There's going to be a people in this generation that's going to rise up. That's when you need to stand. It's not right now so much about what you see about a hard time or a tribulation, but there's going to come a time when we're going to have to put ourselves to test of what we really got on the inside. And I tell you what, if I don't have the genuine, I'll fall down like the rest of them. And at this time, our just man fought down seven times and he gets back up again. But the thing about it is this time, when you fall, you are deceived. You can't, oh, it's just like having a reprobated mind or it's just about falling and blaspheming in the Holy Ghost. It's the same as because you fell into the beast tricks and into his powers and there's going to come a day. I'm telling you, you better get ready to stand against something. I mean, getting an easy ticket out of here. Oh, it's going to look like just like it was for Paul and Peter and James and John. It's going to look so strong. Ah, oh, they had to fight so many things. Well, oh, Paul come through with letters to Damascus. Ah, oh, persecuting the church. And let me tell you something, though. He come through and there was something that had to withstand. Could you imagine it as Paul was holding the coats as they slew Stephen that day and they stoned him? Could you imagine how he felt down the road knowing that he killed a thought a man of God, knowing that he killed somebody full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. They're not, oh, they're not going to have no mercy on us that day. They're going to stone us. They're going to kill us. They're going to get rid of us because they don't love the people of God. Their ways are wicked for the jail. And they're not going to have mercy on you and your little kids. They're going to look at you and say, ah, oh, either you deny that he's Christ and I'm going to get rid of your kids. You have to pick one or the other. And it's going to come a time when you're going to have to choose your salvation or you can choose the world. There's going to come a time. It's going show whether the love of the Father's in you or not. You're going to stand up. You're going to rise up against the beast or you're going to fall in with the beast. There's only one way or another. They ain't two or three. And people are preaching this other way. When that day comes, let me tell you what's going to happen to them. They're going to fall off and they're going to depart from the faith because there's going to be something in their minds. They say, God, I thought it was this way. But let me tell you something. There's something on the inside of them that should tell them different. Uh, come on, son. Don't you fall into that easy way. It ain't an easy way. I found out about God. This ain't easy. It's the hard and it takes God. It takes the comforter in my life. I can't make it without the comforter. I can't walk without the comforter. I can't live without the comforter. It takes God in my life. I couldn't do this myself. Amen. And I ain't going to be able to do it in times by myself. It's going to take something. We're going to think we're doing okay right now. Come on. Brother Wayne, we're thankful we're doing okay. And we're slipping by. Praying every once in a while is doing us okay. Seeking God every once in a while when I get in trouble is okay. But come that day when the church may be just a few months away from being raptured out. But there's a great tribulation that comes beforehand. There's something hard that comes beforehand. There's going to be a struggle. I heard Brother Raleigh preach. I don't know if it was victory after the struggle or a struggle before the victory, however it was, but there's going to come struggle before our victory. I ain't preaching to you that we're losing, church. I'm preaching to you that we're winners in the end. You know what? The whole, the whole thing here, uh, the whole thing, the matter of it is, though, people just want to get to the end that we're winners and they don't want to never look at what happens beforehand. Let me tell you something. Yeah, we're winners in the end. Oh, I was praying the best. I said, God, I know we're winners in the end. The church wins in the end. The beast don't win in the end. The church wins. But the church has got to be the ones that hold on. When you've done all the stand, stand there for it. It's going to take somebody that's willing to fight. It's going to take somebody that has a heart on God. It said that David was a man after God's own heart. It's going to take somebody that loves him. It ain't going to take somebody that's only here every once in a while. Somebody that only wants to come to church on Sunday nights or somebody that only wants to come every once in a while. Wow. It's going to take somebody that's faithful to God, faithful to the church, faithful to praying, faithful to seeking God, faithful to Him because they love Him. They have a, they have a heart after God. 
Hey, Come man, on, yeah. brother. Preach. Preach. I ain't gonna live any old way. That's right. And come, oh, we keep on preaching. You can live any old way and make it through the gates. But if you live that long, it won't matter if you did. If you live that, if you did live that way, come that day, there won't be no hope for you anyhow. Amen. Cause there won't be nothing to keep you. That's right. That's right. Come on. Bless him, Jesus. Jesus, so close to stepping out of the portals of glory and come back to get his people, a people out of a people, not like the world, not like the beast. Not falling after his images, not worshiping him in his images. All oh, the beast is rising up every single day, Brother JR. And people's falling into the tricks. And it's going to come a time when he's going to raise up something great. And it's going to be so good in our eyes, it's going to feel like Eve. You're going to, Satan's going to make it sound good. Oh, thou shalt not surely die. That ain't what, you don't know what he's going to tell you. That ain't what it's talking about in a Revelation chapter 13. That's what he's going to tell you. See, you've got to provide for your family. Oh, you can't buy no more. That's what he's Gonna make it sound like Brother Joey. Oh, what about little Buff and Grand Gracie and Emily? You can't provide for them no more. That's what he's gonna tell you. And he said that that's the he's gonna look in your ears and say, That ain't what he was talking about. And you're gonna think, Oh my god, my kids and my wife, I gotta take care of them. But let me tell you something, it's gonna be that quick that you're gonna run to it. And when you run to it, there's gonna be no hope for you. Oh, I served God for 10, 15 years, but all that all that you did ain't gonna be no good then. All that you served God ain't gonna be no good then. A servant, but it ain't gonna be no good. Oh, you love your kids. If you loved your kids, you wouldn't take them more. If you love your kids, you wouldn't worry about what the beast has. Come on, you need to get back. Come on, you need to Amen. Amen. It's true. Good. People aren't gonna understand My God. that this is even taking place. It's gonna be so sly, like a fox, but you won't even know it's there. And it's gonna slip in on us. And if you ain't praying, and you ain't got discernment in your life. You won't even know that it's there. Come on. You'll run to it thinking it's good. How, how quick do we run to new trends? How quick do we run to a new iPhone or something that comes out? Blood come we run so quick to it and it's going to come out and it's going to look good and we're going to run to it and not even know that it was for destruction that we were running to it. Oh, not knowing that we was running to it in vain. Knowing that what we was getting that we're not getting our real reward in the end of what we should have got. We're going to run to this tank. It's going to look good. But let me tell you something. He's looking for somebody that's going to stand. He said that he's coming back after a wife that's made herself Ready. Come on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I can see Jesus now. The angels, listen to me. The angels, the fields are ripe, ready for harvest. And it's fixing to be. It's so close. And he said, in Revelation, he said, thrust in thy sickle. You know what that was? I can feel the Holy Ghost. It's the people. He's ready to thrust in the sickle. He's looking for his people, Brother Joe. He's looking to thrust in that sickle at any time. And we better be ready for his coming. Oh, could you say if Jesus was coming back tonight, would you be ready for his coming? Or would you have to turn around and say, God, I'm sorry. If after he come, he give you another chance, would you have to say, I'm sorry, God? Or would you be ready to go when he comes? Or what if he said, God, oh, I get, there ain't no second chances after this. There's this life and that's it. Let me tell you something. There's a life to come. That's going to be so much greater than this life here. I began to learn this past few weeks. God's been speaking to me. What is it to serve God for just all my 30 or 40 years, Brother JR, of my life? And maybe have to suffer a lot of things. But the Bible says if we suffer with them, we'll reign with them. Yeah. Oh, I may have to yeah. suffer a little bit now, but later I'll get to reign with Come them. On. Later I'll be with the angels and the old saints of God and Jesus. I'll be down at his feet, worshiping him and thanking him for saving my soul that day. I had no hope. I was lost for the jail. But he come and he died on a cross of Calvary. Yes. He give us life and give it yeah. to us more abundantly. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm going to be glad for the day that I look and see my Savior. I'm not going. I'm going to run to him for the jail and I'm going to kiss his feet and I'm going to give him and I'm going to give him what he deserves. Come on, brother. Yes. Hallelujah. I won't be where I'll pass the street of gold up the walls of Jasper, the river and I'll go right to him. I want to see who I've been serving all these years. Come on. I want to see the one that had enough to die for me. Right. Come in the fleshly nature and know all oh, there was pleasures on earth. 
Oh, maybe he liked the sunrise. I don't know, Jesus. I didn't know him in the flesh. Maybe he liked certain foods as he ate just like we do. I don't know how it was, but maybe he liked life. I'm sure he did like life. But then whenever he went to die on the cross of Calvary, on his mind maybe because he liked certain foods, he liked certain things. Maybe in his fleshly nature, I don't want to die. But he said, nevertheless, this cup passed from me. Oh, not that my will be done, but thine will be done. That's the reason why he done was for you and me. So we can have life and have it more abundantly. So we can have eternal life. He said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life through, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let me tell you something. There's something greater waiting on us. That's why the church better be getting encouraged in this hour. Get encouraged because you know yes. there's a greater place waiting on us. Yeah, we're going to have to suffer a little bit, but there's something greater waiting on the other side. Oh. He said, let us go over to the other side. Yeah, there was a storm in the midst. There was something stirring in the midst. There was a storm that was coming their way, but there was something greater on the other side. There was miracles waiting on the other side. There was a greater place waiting on the other side. I know there's hard places and there's hard storms that we go through, but there's something greater waiting for the church. There's a big storm, a big beast rising up. But just remember, he said, let us go over to the other side. Amen. Come on, brother. Just remember that he died for us. When we get in hard times, in a great tribulation like this, i got to remember, I may not have this Bible, but they may come in and take it away from me. That's why I'm storing up in the storehouse now. Come on. That's why I read it every day, so whenever I get in a hard place and I say, God, i got to give up, that I, oh, some people don't know these things that I remember in my mind. Even though I don't have the word to read every morning, I remember maybe 10 years that I served God, and maybe them 10 years like I had, I've been going for almost three years, but I've been eating the word, eating the word, because that come that day, if I ain't got the yeah. word in, ah, David said, I hid your word in my heart, that I might not sin against Come you. On. And if I ain't got the word, ah, I believe I'll depart, and I, I'll sin against him. Let me tell you something, I'm eating that word every day, so come when on. that day comes, when I get in a hard battle, and they come against me, something comes back in my mind, and says, if God be for me, who can be against me? Something, a little small, small voice in my mind, yeah. comes back to me, that I read before, said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper or maybe sometimes they come and maybe they'll say I'll do this to this one or that to that one. Ah, oh, something says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against yeah, him. There's yeah. something going to come back to me because I've read the Word, because I've hid His Word in my heart. Oh, let me tell you what Mary did. Oh, when Jesus walked about as a little child, He was teaching the temples. He was doing all these great things and it said that she kept it in her heart yes. what He had said. Yeah. Everything that He spoke, she kept in her heart. Everything Thing that he spoke, I want to keep it in my heart. I want to remember it come that day knowing he died for me. We love him because he first loved us. Yes. Something's going to come back to me and know that I can't give up on him and know that I can't turn over to the beast powers. There's something greater waiting on us, but yes. it's going to take us standing for the word of God. Amen. 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 Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I love you, Jesus. It's going to come hard times. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm so glad that I didn't wait and say I was all right in my condition. And I come to a point in my life, though, JR, that I said, I've got to be born again. I know I've repented. I know that I went to the water hole and was baptized in Jesus' name. But there's something greater waiting for me. Yes. There was something better waiting for me. Come on. And it just took a little bit of my time. Maybe from laying off of playing a video game, Brother Joe. Or maybe laying off from doing my own things and pleasing uh-huh. the flesh so much. Come on. It just took a little bit of effort. And let me tell you something. When I received that day, I received a comforter. I received something to keep me in the time of trouble. I received something that's going to keep me in tribulation. I received something that's going to rise up in that hour. The Bible, and I've quoted to you this 
ago when the enemy comes in like a flood, it ain't just anything. It's not just the Lord. It's the Spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard. Yeah, it's what's in me is going to lift up a standard against my enemy. It's not, uh, God didn't say he'd come down and lift it for us. He said that the Spirit will lift up a standard against it. And it's what I got on the inside of me that's keeping me. Yes. It ain't myself. It ain't my flesh. My flesh would have gave up a long time ago. But it's the Spirit that's within me that makes me walk the way I do. It Hello. makes me talk the That's why I don't cuss, Brother J.R. That's why I don't do the thing that the flesh would have me to do. Hello. I'll tell you why. Because I like what I feel. I know what's inside of me. I know what I've been born of. I don't know about you, but I've been born of God. Yes. I ain't born of the flesh, but I've been born of God. Yes. Uh, I, got, I got to stand in this tower, and if I'm going to stand, it's going to be by the Holy Ghost. Come on. Yeah, my Come on. Preach right. I wish I could come through and fill everybody with the Holy Ghost. Because come that hour, that'd be something in there that will begin to stir. And, but I'm feeling this, Brother J.R. On, I, I want something to be in there. I wish I could come and just stir us all right now. One time I was here and I was praying by myself. And I went through every seat. I just spent a couple weeks ago, but I went through here. I think I started right there where Sister Pam is, and I stirred at every seat that I can remember where everybody said I stirred. I want something, I wanted them to stir up the gift of God that was within them. I even went to my own and stirred mine up. But let me tell you what I did different because a church is so important. The leadership of a church is so important. I stirred mine and I stirred Blake's and I picked this pew up and I walked it over there and I picked it up all by myself and pulled it right here because I felt something in the need of this. And I put it right here and I began to stir it together because I got, and I felt the power of God because it's going to take unity and it's going to take glory. If we're going to stand in this hour, it's going to take us coming together. When this beast rises, up. Let's come together. I don't want to be separated from my pastor. I don't want to be separated from my pastor. But I want to be together. I want to be in one in the unity of the Spirit. Ah, the Holy Ghost can raise up in all of us. Hey, maybe he gets a word from God and says, don't go after that thing. Does anybody remember when pastor, when God told him about that movie, nobody go watch it. I remember that. And there was something when he told me that, that come back to my mind, don't go watch that. And I didn't go watch it. And I still ain't watched it. Because it's not of God. When God God may come forth to the word saying that's what it is. Don't touch it. Don't go to it. Oh, I touch not. Taste not. Handle not. Let me tell you something. we got to be separate in this hour. I don't want to fall into anything that's going to keep me from God. Amen. It's good. Thank you, Jesus. Stirring up the gift of God that is within thee. Timothy had been taught something by J.R. From his grandmother and his mother. That's the word. He'd been taught about the ways of God. Uh -huh. Somewhere or another about the Holy Ghost. He said, stir up the gift of God that's in you. But you know, I, I got touched by a word one time. There was nothing to stir me. There was nothing to stir me. There wasn't nothing in there to stir it was like having a big pot and not having nothing in it. It being so dry and clean with nothing in it. No water in it. You can't make macaroni and cheese no water. Amen. You can have all the noodles in there, Brother JR. I've had the word in there, but if they ain't no water, they ain't nothing to cook it. They ain't nothing that's going to make it work right. It's going to take the Spirit of God within me. That's going to make it cook. It's going to make something yes. great. It's going to mix in there. The Word and the Spirit's going to mix. I uh, baptize with the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. I ain't talking about next week, and I ain't talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about tonight. If it takes a little bit of tearing around this altar, I want to tarry with you. I want to be right there with you. And I want to see the Holy Ghost and fill you. I want to see you filled with the oh. baptism of the Holy Ghost because I remember a time when I wish somebody would have come up here and just carried with me a little while until I got it. Somebody would have come up here and just encouraged me. You can get it. You can get it. Keep on press through. Keep on praying. I may stay here 10 minutes before. I don't remember how long I was here, but I know you got to keep on tearing until it comes. They were praying and prayer and supplication and the Holy Ghost came. It didn't say they prayed for a week and then stood there. And they were in prayer and supplication when the yes. Holy Ghost came. And I'm telling you, it's time to get back to the altar. It's come important on. that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You ain't going to have nothing to stand come the end times. Please, I'm begging.
begging you, I'll be supplication to you. Please won't you come up here and seek for the Holy Ghost. Please won't you get stirred up. Because I'm telling you, if you ain't got nothing to do, I'll come the end times after the end. I'll tell you, when I fall for every trick of the beast, oh, Brother Hunter, I won't fall for it. Let me tell you something. It's going to look good to you. And if there ain't something in there telling you otherwise, you'll run for it. Come on. Amen. That's the truth. There's something about the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, where you're sealed until the day of redemption. When is that day of redemption? It's when Jesus steps out and claims, thrusting that sickle, and he claims his own. Let me tell you something. I'm sealed, Bill JR. There ain't nothing can get in there. I'm sealed until that day. Come on. I can unscrew the lid. I can let stuff in. But the Holy Ghost won't let it in. You've got to let the Holy Ghost. You've got to yield yourself unto God. Oh, I know the enemy comes in like a flood, but you've got to let you've got to let the Spirit of the Lord lift up the standard against it. You, I, sometimes I can fight the Spirit all day long, but you know, I can fight the Spirit of God. Amen. If I move with my flesh, I can tell it no, and it won't rise up in the situation. There's been times God's wanted to speak through me, and I wouldn't let it speak through me. Come on, come on, bless you, Lord. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. I felt led to do this today. I wrote this down. I said, maybe some reading, but I may stop and preach a little bit. But I want you to get the fullness of this message. I want something to shake your soul. That when you go home, you can't sleep at night. Come on. Until you get filled with the Holy Ghost. I want you not be able to eat right. Until you get filled with the until you know that you have what it takes to stand. Come on. Man. Could you just look and say, I know I got what it takes to stand. Come on. But JR. I know what I got yeah. will stand in that last yeah. day. Amen. What will stand in the last day. I know what I got will. Come on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Is that not what I'm preaching you right now? Come on. For many shall come in my name. I quoted this. Saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Don't be troubled because of what you hear and what's going on around us. This is just what's got to happen. This is just what's got to take place before Amen. He's coming. Yeah. And He says, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That tells me that it's not the end when we hear about these things. There's something else coming after me. I'll tell you what comes after this. All these are the beginning of sorrows. This is just the beginning of this ain't the end. A lot of people preach that's the end. I tell you, no, it's the end. It's that that's just the beginning of sorrow. Amen. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall be then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, because iniquity shall abound. This is not going on today. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Yeah, but he on. that endureth to the end, but shall but shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Yeah. Because I endure tribulation and hard times, I'm going to be saved. This is why there's going to be many that depart from the faith on that day because they can't endure to the end. I kind of think it's like them ones that fell but you're on the rock, on the stone. It said that they they rose up and they grew real good, but only for a season they endured a little bit of temptation and then yep. it choked it and it killed and it scorched is what it said the sun come down and scorched it because when it rose up all it grew it immediately received the world with gladness yes. but it said because it had no root because it didn't have what it took come in on. the end it was scorched out oh, let me tell you about them other seeds oh, there was one that was sowed among the wayside and it said that immediately Satan come I oh, see this going on in church houses all the time oh, I can preach a whole sermon on that just that one right there People, oh, the soap was the word was sown in their hearts, and it says immediately. How many times do I preach? I and mean, then immediately, oh, I'm preaching to you tonight, and somebody's probably going to get a word in their heart, and then immediately Satan's going to come and take it out of their heart. Yeah. And that's what's happening today. And then I told you about the one about the stone, and then there was another one that was sowed among the thorns. And it said that the cares of this life, after just a little bit of time, rose up and choked it out, yes. and choked the life of it until it said it become unfruitful. It had the fruit at one time. It had the fruit of God, but it became unfruitful. 
people because it was choked out by the cares of this life. Yeah. Maybe choked out, I don't know, but by the beast. Oh, then when it rose up, choked out by the beast because the cares, because they couldn't buy or sell no more. I don't oh, know. I'm just taken by the Holy Ghost. I just don't know. But I know when a word is sown, I'm going to be the one that is sown on the good ground. And I receive it and bring forth some 30 fold and some 60 and some 100. I just want to be getting some. I don't matter if I'm a 60 or a 30 or a 100. I just want to be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. That's right. good. Thank you, Jesus. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso read, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Don't worry about what's going on, but you've got to make sure stay on the rooftop. That's what he said. Don't come out of the off the rooftop. He said stay on top. Don't go down in the house to get the things of the world, to take care of material things. Let me tell you something. When this time comes, you might as well forget about the nice car out in the driveway because it's not going to do you good anyways. So you might as well focus on God then. So many people are building their trust in material things. Building their trust in their job, on their cars, on their house. But one day, I said one day, you're going to lose all that and it won't matter anyways. It's going to become the government and it won't matter. But let me tell you something. I live underneath a different government. There's I'm underneath that government that Isaiah talked about. Ah, upon his shoulders. Ah, come on, it's all on his shoulders. Yes. Everything in my life is on his shoulders. Right. Ah, I know that it's all in him. And it's not because I'm any good. It's but my righteousness is filthy rags. Amen. I ain't done nothing to deserve this, but it's all because of him. Yes. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Don't go back for anything. Just keep on going. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And right here is where it happens. After all this takes place, it said, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not but since, but the beginning of the world to this time, no, not ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, except God shorten them days. Come on, I've all understood this good today. There should be no flesh saved. If God let it go on and on and on, we wouldn't even be saved ourselves. That's how strong it's going to be in them days. That's what he was showing me today. But he has shortened it for the elect's sake. I'll put it yourself for the elect's sake. He shortened it. And he said, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ. I told you it's going to rise up. And it's going to begin to talk like it's a God or something. I said it gave it power over in Revelation to speak and to tell you that it's got something for you. But it said that the ones that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Amen. Hallelujah. For there shall rise false Christ, uh-huh. false prophets, and shall, grow, shall show great signs and wonders. What did I tell you? John talked about it. He's seen it. Oh, you don't believe it. Some people don't. you got to read the Word of God. Come on. Come on. Amen. Shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I told you they're not after the world. They're after the elect's sake. They're not after the world. They're after the saints of God and the men and women of God. They're not after the any old thing. They're after the very elect's sake. That's what they're looking for. Yes. Amen. Come on. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Ah, it's going to look so pretty. Come forth. This is where it's at. This is where God's really moving at right now. Let me tell you something. Just don't fall for any old thing. It said if you if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Well, behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Right here's how God said that Jesus, it's how Jesus is coming back. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the, also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Yes. And the stars shall fall from heaven uh-huh. and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Do you remember over in Hebrews where it said at the end time that there was going to be that heaven, earth, heaven and earth shall be shaken. Now, let me tell you something. I mean, heard it 
time and time again. If you ain't anchored, I'll tell you what. It said that Jesus tried to anchor of our soul. Oh, but he's got to be the actual anchor. Ah, uh, that's one of, oh, one of the on. most known yeah. scriptures, Brother Gerald. You see pictures about it, but it isn't important to you that he's the anchor. He's what's keeping you held down. He's what's keeping me. That's not taking me out of here and letting me lose my mind. He's the Come one that's on. keeping me every single day. It's because of him I live. And because he lives, I live. That's how this thing works. Yes. I'm on, I live and move and have my being in him. That's right. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've got to have something to keep us. Yes. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth his leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, listen to this, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things that he just told you about, know that it is near, even at the doors. Amen. It's even at the doors. When we know these things are coming to pass, we know that his coming is very soon. Ah, uh, some people are preachers. I know I've said before, even, I don't know, he may come tomorrow, but Brother Jerry, he can't come tomorrow unless all this takes place tonight. All this, all these things have got to come to pass before he comes. Jesus is coming back, and we're to go through something. You've got to get ready for His coming. Come on. Amen. And part of getting ready for His coming is knowing. Some people don't know this doctrine. Some people don't know the real Word of God on this. Some people don't even understand that there's going to be a great tribulation. Amen. Come on. That's why I'm preaching this tonight to let you know there's something that's coming upon us that we're going to have to be able to stand in. Amen. Amen. Come on. I know some people's going to get mad, but it don't matter to me. I know I want to make sure I'm right. If you don't want to receive the word, I'm going to receive it. Come on. Come on. That's just how I feel about it. If God gives me a preach at every church I go into, Brother Joe, I'm going to preach it. And then if they kick me out, don't let me come back. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, well, you they didn't want the word, and I'm going to go preach it wherever else I can. Come on. Bless Man. It needs preach. People forget about it. Or some people's teaching other stuff that I just can't agree with, Brother Joe. I can't read it. Come on, I can't find it and I can't say I'm reading it with a carnal mind. Let me tell you something. I prayed and prayed. I told you. So I've been praying about this stuff since 2016 and I wanted to know for myself. I didn't want to know hear it from somebody else. I wanted to hear it from God. I didn't come to Daddy to ask this stuff. Right. I wanted to know for myself. I studied the scriptures. I wanted to know, Brother Joe, whether or not which way it was. Right. I was hearing one way. I was hearing another way. I said, God, I don't know which way it is. Bless you. Come on. I never studied on it. But when I began to study, I began to see things. I prayed for a long time because I couldn't understand it when I first started studying on it. And I studied multiple times at this because I want to know how it's going to be. And I know now that this is how it's going to be. And when it comes, I'm going to be ready. Whether or not you're ready, I'm going to be ready because oh. I know the truth of God's Word. Come and on. I know that i got to be ready come this day. If I fall off, it's going to be my own It's going to be my own problem. That's right. It's for my own reason why I fell. Not because God didn't show me. Amen. Not because I wasn't seeking to find it out. It's going to be because I, I departed myself. Amen. Come on. I ain't going to blame it on God. The reason why I depart from the faith. If I, if I depart from the faith, it ain't going to be, it ain't going to be God's fault. Come on, yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. I wanted to know He showed me. He, said, he ain't giving us no better, better roses for us. We ain't no better than Paul and Peter and him. Amen. Come on. Oh, good. Son. He said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Mm -hmm. So what he started it with is what he's going to finish it with. Come on. Bless you, Lord. Come on. Some people don't want it. Amen. Come on. That's the truth. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour no, no man know, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Isn't that how people are today? Amen. They keep on going their own ways. Even until the day that Jesus comes back, there's going to be people still going after their own ways. Amen. And going their own paths. I'm going to tell you something. Every man's right in his own eyes. Amen. Yeah. That's true. 
Christ. Come on. Everybody thinks they're right. That's the reason why I think that it's preached so much. Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. Because so many times we get going our own way instead of his way. Amen. That's why every single service that's brought out. Because people's right in their own eyes. Right. Their own ways is what's right, yeah, they think. Come on. That's true. Help us, Lord. That's the reason why you go in some search, some churches and it's the same old message. Uh-huh. Yep. If you want to hear a death, burial, and resurrection message, you can go there just about every time here. Uh-huh. And it ain't just in revivals neither. Come on, amen. They really want you to know about his coming, don't they? Come on. Come on. Come on. The truth anyways. Amen. amen. Come on. This is what's going to keep us. Amen. There's going to come a time, but if I ain't got this in me, you ain't going to be able to get it. Right. You almost can't get it right now anyhow, this version. Come on. That's the truth. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. And knew not. Right ain't that how people is today? No, not. No, not. That's how it's going to be if you don't receive this word. Right. You're going to know not that it's even coming upon you. Amen. Yep. Because like I said, the word's going to be sown and Satan's going to come in and take the word out of your heart. And like it wasn't even there. Amen. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. It's going to be a time. But Jared, I don't believe there's going to be a lot make it. God showed me something one night Dad was here preaching about the old path back in the revival. And after hearing them scriptures, we all I've quoted that since I've been saved, I think. Or as I remember, I've quoted that. I've said that. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And what does it say after it says, and few there be that find it. Let me, sh- let me share this with you. Few there be that find it. Jeremiah said that when you find, look and see the old path, and when you find it, walk therein. He said over there, it said, and few there be that find it. There's few that find it. There's going to be probably even more fewer than that that walk in it. Come on, man. He didn't say because they found it, they walked in it. said few there be that Somebody find it. Said, walk in it. Amen. And then the ones in Jeremiah said, we will not walk therein. Amen. That's what's happening today. I love it. That's a hard way. I don't want that. That's what they said about Jesus. And when he told them, he said, except you drink my, eat my flesh and drink my blood, he said, you had no life in you. Amen. Or had part with me. And you know what it is? People think it's hard sayings when we preach stuff like this. But come the end time, brother, they're going to know and they're going to see right before their eyes what we was preaching to him and it's just going to be just like Noah preaching all them years a hundred years preaching saying won't you come get on this ark with me won't you pitch in and help me build this ark so we can get on when the flood comes all oh, it's going to rain oh, I don't believe that Jesus is coming I don't believe that all oh, this tri- tribulation is coming I don't believe that I think we're getting an easy ticket out of here that's what they're saying today They, oh, people says I don't know about that rapture I know about the rapture the rapture is real it ain't the rapture part that it is it's the way that's the timeline that they're putting it in Amen yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's true. I heard people say, I don't believe in that rapture stuff. Well, then you don't. You ain't getting out of here then. Bless him, Lord. That's right. The rapture, uh, the rapture ain't even in the Bible. Neither is the word Bible. That's Come right. on. Amen. Come That's on, right. preacher. Right. Rapture, it's the meaning of what that word is. Uh-huh. The rapture of the church is the catching up out of here. That's long as told us that that, that, great, that rapture's actually coming, that big catching away, Billy Joe. So if the rapture's real. That's what you need to The rapture's real, but it's the way they preach it. It's the time that they put it in. They're saying we're getting out before the tribulation. But if I, if there's a, if there's another way out of this, why would Jesus ain't got two brides? No, he don't. I was thinking about this today. He ain't got two two different brides, Billy Joe. I heard some say he's got the Gentile bride and the Jew bride. Let me tell you something. I've been adopted into the same one they've been. I've been grafted in. I ain't no different than the Jews. I've got the same benefits and the same God. I ain't no two different way. It's it's one bride. Amen. That's why he said he's coming back after the, his wife. Uh-huh. Not his wife that made herself ready. His wife that made herself ready. Amen. Herself. Not themselves. Amen. One. One of them. So when he catches his church out of here, anybody that's left ain't going to be gone. Amen. There ain't no seven years of, of getting out of here and you getting a second chance. Amen. If that was the fact, why don't we just leave it up and then wait for them seven years? I don't, you know, said immediately after that's tribulation, right. what did it say? Come on. It said that the sun's going to be darkened. Yeah. The moon ain't going to give us light. 
the stars will fall from heaven. The earth's going to be shook. And when you ain't, and you ain't been caught out of here, the earth's going to shake and you're going to be left here. You know what it said in one spot in Revelation? It said that when, the, when this day comes and all this takes place, the men are going to be running right. to the caves and on the going to the they rocks and they'll fall on me. Get rid of me because I don't want to take, I don't right. want to be in this that yeah. takes place. But the only way they could have got out wasn't in rocks killing them, Brother Gerald. They're still another place for them. They're going to cry for the rocks to fall on them. But the only way they're getting out would have been beforehand. Where before, when that after the immediately the tribulation was over, that's when we're getting caught out of here. Amen. Come on. Bless you, Lord. You're going to be one of the very ones that are crying for the rocks to fall on you yes. if you don't get right with Jesus now. Come on. Yeah. Bless you, boy. It's true. How many believe this is a real word? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 I believe this is a real word from God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't spend my time praying and seeking God for nothing. When I get up here, I expect to give the people something. Yeah, that's right. Everybody, how, how many come here not to get a word from God? Amen. Amen. Yes. Come on, so look man. at all them hands. Amen. What would it have been, Brother Jerry, if I just waited all the way up to the day to start asking God for a message? Come on. If I'd have waited all the way up to the day, right up before we went to come to church and just flipped through there and found something. Uh -huh. Come on. Come look on. at all these hungry people wanting something from God. Amen. Yeah. They're not wanting it from me. They're wanting something from God. He's just using me. You ain't actually, you ain't wanting it from Brother Hunter. You're wanting it from God. Oh, that's right. Come on. And I truly believe this was from God. Yeah. This is a word to keep us. And Brother Jerry, people don't want to hear it. Uh-uh. I'll tell you what. I'll probably pray it like this. I want to keep this word in our hearts. Brother Jerry, if this ain't preached at least a couple times a year, people forget about it. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's right. You mentioned a, a word that was preached here two, three years, and sometimes I can't even remember. It. Come on. I don't remember that. I remember if somebody mentions a, a something from a word that was preached, I can remember it because it goes in my heart. I don't forget two, or three weeks down the road what was preached here. I remember it. Come on. Help us, Jesus. We got to remember the word that comes through here. Yes. I'm gonna pray that God gives this message at least a couple times a year. Maybe He'll give it to some of y'all. Come on. I don't know, but I want I want God to, I want people to understand that this ain't you ain't get no easy way out. This ain't be, no bed of roses. That's right. This ain't easy. I, I guess I ever should that say anyhow. You ever went to Santa Rose? There's much thorns around, eh? Hey man. Come on. Maybe it is a bed of roses. I Come thank on. God though. Bless him, Jesus. Come on. But I thank God for this. If anybody wants to pray, won't you come pray? Dad, won't you sing that song at a uh, road of no return? Maybe somebody would like to pray, Bill Joe. Maybe somebody has been touched by the Word of God. Come on, brother.